artificial intelligence is great and can help us handle a lot of things which are too complicated for the human brain. However, AI is going to kill music and, believe it or not, nobody will care. There are two key reasons for this. The first is that we are naturally attracted to what looks and sounds familiar. Sure, you may think your taste is pretty unique and sophisticated when it comes to music, but the truth is that, most likely, you will lean towards something similar to what you heard before, because it simplifies life for the brain and conserves energy, a trait inherited from a distant past, when food was scarce, dangers were plenty, and saving energy was essential for survival. Actually, humans and T-Rex never coexisted, but you know what I mean, right? AI music generators excel at producing songs in the style of various composers, enabling the creation of unique tracks with a simple click. Due to their algorithms being trained on wildly popular music, the generated output will always sound very similar to what you heard before. In this context, unique simply means that nobody can accuse you of plagiarism, but to me, uniqueness is something else. Of course, even humans often use something they've heard before as a reference when creating music. However, what sets us apart is our ability to manipulate these references in unconventional ways, a luxury that AI machines don't have. The second reason stems from the transformation in music consumption following the advent of the internet and streaming platforms. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to introduce you the old way and the new way. In the old way, this is how you could discover new music. Radio, jukebox, clubs, record stores, friends. Regardless of the method, when you discover the song you liked, the optimal way to repeatedly enjoy it in high sound quality was to purchase the record. Depending on your location and financial situation, this could range from reasonably affordable to quite expensive. Every time you indulge in a piece of music, money left your wallet, and especially if you were a student living on your parents' allowance, you wanted to make sure it was a good investment. In other words, you were giving value to the music you were listening to, and when you bought an album knowing only one or two songs from it, you were spending a lot of time listening to the other songs as well, even those you didn't like so much at first, because, well, you spent money on it and you wanted to squeeze as much as possible from your investment. Now, let's think about it from the creator's perspective. What did it mean knowing that whoever bought your album would probably give it a good listen before deciding if they liked it or not? It meant you had the freedom to get creative. You could throw in some slow burners, you know, the songs that take a bit of time to grow on people, maybe because of an unconventional arrangement, a lengthy intro or some unique sounds. Let's talk now about the new way. The new way kicked in when internet gained popularity, and initially it showed up with the rise of torrents. The idea of being able to listen to almost any song you wanted by simply downloading an audio file was pretty exciting. However, there was a problem. It was illegal, since it was completely free, so not everybody embraced this model. To address the piracy problem and bring legitimacy to music downloads, streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music and others emerged. For the monthly cost of a CD, they offered and continue to provide access to millions of songs whenever you want them, making a subscription all you need. As a result of this approach, music lost its value, it became cheap and disposable. How does our brain respond to such a situation? By dedicating very little time to a new song. I mean, why bother spending two minutes trying to figure out if we like a song or not when there are millions of other songs waiting for us, which we might like better? From the perspective of a music creator, this is a disaster. Studies indicate that you only have about seven seconds to capture people's attention. Forget about long intros or building an atmosphere. Your song needs to convey its essence within those crucial seven seconds. This is the number one piece of advice you find in any publication about music marketing. And as a music creator, it's horrible. 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 Mind you, I have nothing against people giving such an advice, because they are absolutely right. It's a fact. The horrible thing is that it kills creativity completely. Now, let me show you one thing. This is how much I earned last month from 830 streamings of my songs in India. This is official data from my TuneCore account. A bigger name may count on live shows and merchandise to make some money, but for a small act like me, who can rely only on downloads and streaming, 
Grabbing the attention of millions of people every month is crucial to making money. To achieve that attention, there are only two ways, and they work best in combination. Number one, consistently release new material every month. And number two, ensure that the initial seconds of my songs are as catchy as possible. The consequence of number one is that more and more singles are released every month at the expense of albums. Where is the problem, some of you may say. Well, I tell you what is the problem. Have you ever wondered why albums like Black Celebration, The Dreaming, The Dark Side of the Moon and many others are quite rightly considered masterpieces? It's because of the emotional flow that connects each song. Even though they're not properly concept albums, for about 40 minutes you get completely wrapped up in a certain vibe, whether it's dark, uplifting or whatever. A single by its nature cannot capture that feeling and it's a great loss. Number two means that the only choice for music creators is to follow the beaten track at the start of each song they release to please brains no longer accustomed to focus on anything for more than a few seconds. AI is great at identifying trends and on following beaten tracks because it's unable to be creative and come out with something new, or at least not yet. So the temptation for a new or little known act to use its capability is very strong. Does it mean all hope is lost for musicians who refuse to conform and insist on using their talent and creativity to get at least some recognition? Are we forced to accept a world where awesome some writers may get frustrated so quickly that they will give up on showing off their talent? Not necessarily, but we need to make an effort as music consumers and shift our music consumption habits back to the way things used to be. I'm not suggesting you to ditch your Spotify and start hunting for your old CDs or record player. Your preferred streaming service actually has everything you need to trick your brain and simulate the conditions which were the norm in the 20th century. Please follow these steps. 1. Make sure your app's download folder is clear. 2. Pick the least popular artist from your library. 3. Have the app recommend a similar artist. Streaming platforms are very good at this. 4. Listen to the song with the most plays. This is like the old school hit single, the track you'd probably stumble upon through radio or other traditional discovery methods. If you don't like it, repeat step 3 until you find a song you like. 5. Download the album which contains the song you liked and listen to it several times, no matter if the first time it does not convince you. This simulates the purchase of an album in the old days and forces our brain out of its lazy mode or comfort zone, if you will, making it pay closer attention to the music. Trust me, it's really worth it. If the urge to switch to something else is overwhelming, here's a trick. Give the album a listen while you're out for a walk, perhaps during your lunch break, and enable the stream only with Wi-Fi function or whatever it's called in the app you're using. The only song you'll have access to are the ones you downloaded, and that's why it's essential to begin with an empty downloaded folder. If eventually you find out that you do like that album, please show support to your newfound artist in any way you can. Drop them an email, leave a comment on the video, or consider buying their merchandise. That's it. If you agree with what I said, please share this video in any way you can. Keep in mind, the aim here is not to prevent AI from taking over music composition, because I'm afraid it's too late for that. Instead, it's about reshaping our brains to appreciate music and offering a chance for artists who resist the AI model to garner at least some recognition. One last time, let's bring value back to music. Thank you.